Hi guys, it's Natalie here and I hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to go over um, creating fruit vinegars. So I personally have been creating fruit vinegars for a number of years and it's really, really easy. I tend to use a one to one to one ratio. Um, so I'll leave my link to the blog in the video below. Um, check it out. I'll just I'll write out everything for you. So a fruit vinegar is really easy. So once I have processed something to do with fruit and I have um, leftover skin or rinds or pith or in a flesh whatever's left over so if, for example if I'm juicing a fruit um, I have what all the leftover um, non-juice <laughs> that I would use or if I'm using a pineapple I would use pineapple skins to make a really good pineapple vinegar which is amazing by the way um, so in this case recently what I did was I juiced some of my ruby grapefruits for fresh um, grapefruit juice as well as to make um, preserved grapefruit juice which I later canned and now it's left with all the leftover flesh and skin some of it I turned into marmalade and some of it I kept to make grapefruit uh, vinegar um, which is yeah, wonderfully easy to make so all I did was I took you'll see here in my fermenting bag at the bottom is about a cup worth of grapefruit the actual fruit itself and this is about a liter of water so this is where the one to one to one ratio comes in is liter of water cup of fruit cup of sugar what i used to do is i used to put my fruit next just those three ingredients in a jar like i have here you can see this is a two cupper <laughs> so this one is an apple vinegar i'm busy making it's got two cups in a in a bag there so I created a fermenting bag and I'll go over that now with you um, and then it's two liters of water and two cups of sugar in here and that's all you really need and then you put it in a jar and you cover the jar so vinegar unlike a wine is an aerated ferment so that means it needs to have air be able to come in and out so this allows for that I'll open it up for you shortly so you can have a look and see what it looks like um, so yeah, that is, this allows for it, so you can just, you see the lid is on here quite loosely, it's not sealed anyway, um, and air can come and go, and then I just put this cloth over, and I put it on with elastic bands, this is just to prevent any dust and insects from unnecessarily getting into my ferment. And when you do it like this, with just the three ingredients of sugar, fruit, and water, it takes up to three months it can take up to three months and then after three months you start to get a really good vinegar you can leave it to ferment for up to six months um, but yeah three months is when it starts to become a beautiful vinegar so one of the reasons I keep it in the bag is I started creating these bags after starting fermenting bags so luckily I'm a former dressmaker and I have loads of fabric and sewing machine and everything I need so I just Put together some bags to ferment um, and what that does is it prevents the fruit bits from escaping and floating to the top because if that happens you have a very high likelihood that you're going to get mold on your vinegar and then it's useless and you can throw it away or you can let it become a vinegar right to the end and use it for cleaning only purposes so the main reason to keep it in the bag is to help keep all the fruit bits together so you can weight it down and keep it under the water level and you can see in this ferment specifically i've just used a a glass and this glass just goes in and holds down the fermenting bag and keeps the fruit completely submerged so it doesn't have a chance to rise to the top and create any kind of opportunity for mold to grow along the top of your vinegar because yeah once it happens you can't consume it and it's unfortunately the end of that for you so if you really want to get into fruit making vinegars and you want to start like that that's a really great easy way there is a way to get your vinegar to ferment faster though. So I was very lucky enough um, recently to be um, gifted a SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeasts. So SCOBY looks like a very gross little honey disc looking thing. So you can see here, you see this little SCOBY. So actually underneath here, what's floating here is, and partly weighted down is the original SCOBY. This is a new SCOBY that grew in my ferment. 
So originally the vinegar would take at least three months. And even after three months, it can still taste a bit watery. It's starting to get that vinegar taste. And as it starts to get that vinegar taste, you know, you can leave it to go a little bit longer. Um, but what happened with this one, with this grapefruit one, is I put the scoby in. And that was a month ago. And a month later, I tasted it. And it is the most delicious fruit vinegar I have ever <laughs> had in my life it is amazing this grapefruit vinegar is so delicious i'm going to be putting it on all the dressings for, well in all the dressings for my summer salads i think it's going to be a phenomenal phenomenal vinegar it really is delicious and it only took a month to ferment with the sco the scoby and it is wow the the flavor is there's much more flavor to it even though it's clearly a vinegar it's very vinegary and um obviously it fermented much faster and the benefit of a faster ferment is you have less chance of something going wrong. I mean, I've done things where I've done it as well as I can. Weights, everything is submerged and it still goes moldy or still goes slimy or something still goes wrong. Because when you have a ferment that is three to six months in the making, you have three to six months of the possibility of something going wrong. But if you, in within using a SCOBY within one month, or in one month can have the most amazing delicious vinegar definitely is worthwhile but if you're not lucky enough to have a scoby there's nothing wrong with starting the old-fashioned way <laughs> and quite often if you leave these uh, vinegars that don't have a scoby to stand for long enough sometimes they even grow a scoby of their own and then you've literally created your own scoby from scratch which is a possibility to happen i tried that for years i never came right to growing my own scoby i just never never seemed to get right um so i was very lucky to have been gifted one um, so yeah, speaking of which, as I mentioned, this very delicious grapefruit vinegar has created a second SCOBY. So I was thinking of putting this up in my Jaeger shop. I will leave a link in the description to this video um, for you to go and have a look at it. And someone can, if you live in South Africa and uh, you sign up for the Jaeger app, I'm not being paid for this promo. I just love using the platform because it helps to protect buyers and sellers. Um, I'm going to be putting up the SCOBY with some, with about half a cup of liquid up for sale and it will be available there for you to purchase your own SCOBY, have it shipped to you, it can ship out to anywhere in South Africa and start making your own fruit vinegars. It is amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing way to start making vinegars and obviously there's so many benefits to these fruit vinegars. Um, the, the acetic acids are phenomenal, it's number one reason people use apple cider vinegar in a lot of their foods. Unfortunately, apple cider vinegar in a lot of the vinegars you buy in stores are distilled. So when they distill it, they also kill off a lot of the good uh, bacteria and probiotics and prebiotics that are in the vinegar. So when you purchase and you start making your own homemade vinegars, you just, not only do you get that really highly beneficial acetic acids, but you also get the probiotics and the prebiotics that develop as a result of the fermentation process. And those are just phenomenal, phenomenally good for gut health in general. And I know we all want really good gut health. And of course, with the added bonuses, it helps to boost serotonin. So by drinking these vinegars or putting them in your food, it's all, it literally is a way to make yourself a little bit happier. And who doesn't want to be a little bit happier, right? So my favorite way to consume these is I put a shot of homemade vinegar in a mug of warm water, not hot, because you don't want to kill off some of those good bacteria, but not cold, just because that's my personal preference. Uh, but a nice warm glass of um, water. Sometimes I have stir in a teaspoon of honey um, and a shot of this vinegar. And it's a really great way to start today or end the day and to help boost your overall overall health and wellness so yeah that's my thing on fruit vinegars i'm a huge fan of it and i'm literally making liters and liters of the stuff at a time once it is fermented like this so my scoby has started to drop which means the fermentation has ended so i'm going to filter this off i'm going to store this vinegar you can store it in your cupboard because it's a fermented product it's it technically wouldn't have a shelf life because it's a pres preserved product on its own it's a type of preservation but you can keep it for up to six months if you really want to be safe but 
I mean, I drink vinegars I've made more than a year ago and they're still pretty good. If anything, they're just more vinegary. <laughs> but you can store in your cupboard um, or in the, the fridge if you really want to. And um, then you can use a scoby and a bit of the leftover vinegar to make your next vinegar. And just keep on going and keep on going. So a great way to start that is to add the scoby, add half a cup of the old vinegar to your new cup of sugar and liter of water and cup of fruit and let that go for another month. And every month, as soon as your scurvy starts to drop, you know, fermentation is done and start again with a new batch. So if you have any questions and want to know about vinegar making, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And if you want to know anything more about homesteading and home fermenting and home canning and doing a bit of gardening, feel free to follow my profile because I'll be sharing all of those adventures that I go through with you. Thank you.